you can see here, there's also a tricky part. We have a very strange structure here. Um, this is the final year 2013. This is the um, first half 2013. This is the second half, first half 2014. So the deal is almost happened in this after the second half of 2014. And we want to get the last 12 month figures closest to the announcement of the deal so that we would really um, get a get a more um, accurate um, guide to conduct our study. Now I will go to PowerPoint and before we start adjusting our income statement, I want to explain you what LTM financials are and how um, they're structured. So I'm going to go to my PowerPoint file. As you can see here, guys, now I'm going to explain the logic behind LTM financials in Burger King's acquisition of Tim Hortons. The deal, as you can see here, is announced on 26th of August in 2014, which is somewhere at uh, close to the um, end of third quarter. So the last quarter results prior to the year, the closest is the end of second quarter 2014 which is um, 2014 first half, these two quarters. So in this report released here, I have these figures, all right? What I'm interested is this, the LTM financials. From this last um, announcement closest to the deal, the last announcement closest to the deal, 12 months before, so the, the year um, prior to deal announcement the LTM financials. So how can I get that? First, I need, of course, the full year 2013, the previous year here, as you can see, the four quarters of 2013. And I have the first half of 2013, Q1 and Q2 figures, which are released in Q2 10 Q reports here at the end of second quarter. So I simply subtract this 2013 first half figure from the full year figures here. So I get rid of this and I um, remain with these two quarters. And then I add the first two quarters of 2014 into this, which means I get the last 12 month figures closest to the announcement of the deal. So this is how it works. All right, and now we know how to adjust the income statement. Let's get to the LTM figures. What we did is simple. It is what we explained here. We subtracted this part from full year, previous year. So we were left with the side and we added this part at the top of it. So we have the last 12 month figures as we did in here. We subtracted from the full previous year, we subtracted the first half and we added this first half of the second year. So we would have this. I think that's clear. And I did this for each line item and I made the calculations to, to check them. And this is how we get the um, LTM figures. And this is where we get the adjusted LTM figures, which we use in our um, transaction uh, multiple calculations, as you can see here. And now I'm going to calculate this <laughs> uh, multiples. Uh, they are pretty straightforward because we have all the data we need. So we simply um, EV or sales, we simply um, divide the implied enterprise value we found by the, um, the, the revenue item we didn't make any adjustments in this line. So it's simply to getting from the reporting income statement by the um, last 12 month revenues, uh, which yielded four multiple, a multiple of four. And then we did the same thing for EBITDA. We divided the implied enterprise value by the adjusted last 12 month EBITDA number, which is, as you can see, um, much higher than actually 2014 number, the adjusted number is $31 million higher when you go for last 12 month figures, which gave us a multiple of 16.4.